Hi folks, welcome to AP Biofun with Dr. D. This is Chemistry of Life, A Tale of Water and Bonds in Three Acts, the final act. Okay, we're gonna start with this GIF. Why Sheldon Cooper breathing into a paperback? He's having a heart a panic attack, correct? So why is he breathing into a paperback? And we will see at the end why he's doing that. Today, we're gonna to talk about acid, bases, buffers, pH, and why they matter. And again, um, you should review your chemistry, but this is basically talking about the acids, the bases, and the buffers, and the pH as they relate to cells and life. The water dissociation is rare and reversible. It is important in the chemistry of life. And hydrogen ions and hydroxyl ions are very reactive. That's important to remember. Solutes called acid and bases disrupt the balance between hydrogen ions and hydroxyl ions in pure water. Acids will increase the hydrogen ion concentration, where bases will reduce the concentration of hydrogen ions. Okay, so hydrogen ions and hydroxyl ions can attract other ions in charged portions of large molecules. They can neutralize charges, they disrupt interactions, and they can wreak havoc on, inter on ionic interactions, by the way, and the structure of large molecules, as we will see in later videos. So here's a slide I have borrowed from a great AP bio teacher named um, Kim Foglia on ionization of water and pH. Now, when water ionizes, hydrogen ions split from water, leaving hy hydroxide ions. If the concentrations of both are equal, then we say that water is neutral or the pH is seven. pH really is a scale that measures um, the concentration of hydrogen ions. If there are more hydrogen ions than hydroxyl ions, then we say that the solution is acidic and the pH is less than seven. If the hydrogen ion concentration is less than hydroxyl ion, then we say the solution is basic and pH is higher than seven. And on the right, you will see the pH scale and common substances and their pHs. Fruit juices, eggs, fish, tea, chicken, beer, sugar, all are slightly acidic. Coffee is very acidic, by the way. Whereas tomatoes, cabbage, carrots, almonds, apples are a little bit on the basic side. So what is really the pH scale? The pH scale ranges from one to 14, where seven, is neutral because the concentration of both ions is the same. One is very acidic and 14 is very basic. Now, don't quote me on this, but actually you're welcome to quote me on this. It's not just my sentiment. The pH scale is the most ridiculous unit of measurement and it causes a lot of problems for students of science, not just high school students. In any aqueous solution at 25 degrees, the product of hydrogen ion concentration and hydroxyl ion concentration can be written as, and it equals 10 to the negative 14, okay? The pH of a solution is defined by the negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration, which is written as pH equals negative logarithm of the concentration of hydrogen ions. Now this formula is present on the AP Biology formula sheet, so you don't need to remember it. However, you need to understand what it means. And I know it's ridiculous, but you need to understand it. Now for neutral solutions, the hydrogen ion concentration is 10 to the negative seven, right? Because the hydroxyl ion concentration is also 10 to the negative seven. And when you multiply them, it becomes 10 to the negative 14. So hydrogen ion concentration is 10 to the negative seven. So when you plug it in into that formula, it becomes negative log of hydrogen ion concentration equals negative, negative seven, which is seven. So pH of seven means that the concentration of hydrogen ions is 10 to the negative seven, or that's 0 0.000000, and I can't count the zeros, one, okay? The log scale really is used because the concentrations are very, very small. And negative log scale to denote that it's very, very low. 
okay? And this table basically is gonna kind of help you understand it. So pH of zero means, which is like almost impossible that you have only hydrogen ions and no hydroxyl ions. pH of one means you have 0 0.1 molar concentration of hydrogen ions and 0 0.0000000, many zeros, one high hydroxyl ion activity and so on. The lower the hydrogen ion concentration becomes, the higher the pH. So it is really opposite day. So what's the rationale for the formula, really? The rationale is that the concentration of hydrogen ions are so small that you need a logarithmic scale. Otherwise, you're gonna have to like write lots and lots and lots and lots of zeros, right? The negative sign on the log represents the fact that the concentration is less than one and turns a negative number into a positive number. So zero and eight, 0 0.8 zeros and then a one is really 10 to the negative eight, which will translate into eight. So the rationale for making the formula so complicated is that we're dealing with whole positive numbers instead of 10 to the negative seven, 10 to the negative eight, 10 to the negative five, and so on. Nonetheless, it's kind of a ridiculous scale. But what it is important for you, it's important for you to understand what it means. So a pH of one, if you change the pH from pH one to pH two, you're changing the hydrogen ion concentration from 10 to the negative one to 10 to the negative two, which means you have 10 times less hydrogen ion concentration. So a single unit of pH change is a tenfold change in a hydrogen ion concentration. Remember that. So if you go from one to two, you have 10 times less hydrogen ions. If you go from eight to nine, you also have 10 times less hydrogen ions. If you go from pH eight to pH seven, you have 10 times more hydrogen ions. If you go from pH seven to pH six, you have 10 times more hydrogen ions. If you go from pH seven to pH four, you have 1000 times more hydrogen ions and so on. So each one unit of pH is really tenfold difference in hydrogen ion concentration. If you're going lower, then you're increasing hydrogen ion concentration. If you're going higher, you're decreasing hydrogen ion concentration. Okay, so this is what you need to know. You don't need to know the formula, but you do need to understand what it means. And there are three things to remember. If you're in a stressful situation, just remember these three things. One, it's opposite day. Low pH means high hydrogen ion concentration. High pH means low hydrogen ion concentration. That is the most common mistake I have seen students make. The fact that they forget that it's opposite day. Two, a pH unit is tenfold change in hydrogen ion concentration because it's a logarithmic scale. And three, if you're less than seven, you're an acid. If you're more than seven, then you're base. Most biological fluids have a pH of around seven. It's not exactly seven, so it's anywhere between six and eight. Okay, so what are buffers and why are buffers important in cellular regulation? Well, the pH of cells must be kept around seven because the pH will affect the shape of molecules and the shape of molecules will affect their function. Therefore, the pH will affect cellular function. We're going to explore more how changes in pH affect the shape and therefore the function of important biological molecules in later videos. But for now, it's important to remember that we do not want the pH to change drastically inside our bodies, inside our cells. To prevent large changes in pH, we control our pH, we control homeostasis by using buffers. And I know you've studied this in bio last year, at great detail. This, so this is just a review. Buffers really are substances that prevent large changes of pH. So you can add a lot of base or you can add a lot of acid, but the pH is going to change very little because there is a buffer present. And buffers are like uh, sponges, really. Think of a sponge. A sponge can absorb water, 
if you spill water and you put a sponge on the spilled water, the sponge will soak up all the water, the extra water. When you have a dry surface and you want to put some water on that surface, you're going to squeeze the sponge and the sponge is going to release some of the water it had absorbed. So this is what buffers are. They can absorb hydrogen ions when there's too much of it, just like a sponge can absorb water if you spill water, or they can donate hydrogen ions when hydrogen ions falls. When you have a dry surface and you want some liquid on that dry surface, you're gonna squeeze the sponge and the sponge is gonna release a little bit of water, okay? So use the sponge analogy to remember what buffers do. Okay, so how do we buffer our fluids, our blood? In a very, very clever way. Carbonic acid is a buffer that contributes to the stability of pH in human blood. So what is carbonic acid? On the left, you will see the formula for carbonic acid, H2CO3. In response to our rise in pH, when it becomes basic, our blood becomes basic, that means if you were to drink that alkaline water from Whole Foods, or if you were to accidentally swallow some household cleaner, or if you're hyperventilating, and we're gonna get back to that hyperventilation, now you have less hydrogen ions in your blood. You're basic. What's gonna happen? If you have less hydrogen ions in your blood, then the equilibrium here of this reaction is going to move towards the right. So the, the carbonic acid is going to dissociate into this ion and this ion, and it's going to increase the hydrogen ion concentration. What about if you now increase the hydrogen ion concentration because you've been drinking lots of lemonade or eating tomatoes or drinking lots of Coke and coffee? Now you have a lot of hydrogen ions in your blood and the equilibrium is going to be shifted to the left towards forming carbonic acid. So carbonic acid can either dissociate to generate more hydrogen ions or you can form more hydronic acid, carbonic acid, to remove hydrogen ions, okay? And what is carbonic acid? How is carbonic acid formed? Guess how? The carbon dioxide that we produce in cellular respiration, some of it will be exhaled by our lungs, some of it will be dissolved in water to form carbonic acid. For this reason, our lungs and our kidneys play an important role in regulating pH and maintaining homeostasis, okay? So we can increase respiratory rate or decrease respiratory rate, thereby changing the amount of CO2 that we expel from our bodies or that we retain in our bodies. If you retain more CO2, that is, if you expel less, if you breathe out less CO2, you're going to have more carbonic acid. If you expel too much CO2, if you don't retain enough CO2, then you're going to have less carbonic acid. And this is going to change this equilibrium here. The kidneys also have a role in this because they regulate the retention of this bicarbonate ion. So this is a very complicated system that works perfectly, by the way, to maintain homeostasis to maintain relatively constant pH of our blood and our bodily fluids. So drinking alkaline water, guess what it's going to do? It's going to trigger this system to maintain neutral pH. So you cannot raise the pH of your blood or lower it by drinking alkaline water or acidic water or whatever other health fat, which is not based on science, you may see. Now, of course, you can accidentally swallow a lot of household cleaner and die because your body will not be able to so quickly compensate for the large change in pH. But overall, our lungs, our kidneys, our breathing all work together to maintain a constant pH. And nothing you do will change that, including drinking non-GMO alkaline water from Whole Foods. So why is Sheldon breathing into a paper bag? So why are people that are having panic attacks 
and hyperventilating told to breathe into a, pa into a paperback. Because panic attack usually leads to hyperventilation. That means your breathing is really fast and really shallow. That means you are expelling too much CO2. So too much CO2 leaves um, your blood through the lungs, through your breath. Not enough is left. That means there's not enough carbonic acid left, which means your blood turns a little bit of al alkaline. Okay, because you're removing hydrogen ions from the blood to compensate for the drop in carbonic acid. Okay, this leads to a condition called respiratory alkalosis. So your blood becomes slightly alkaline. So which way is the equilibrium going to shift? If you have less CO2, then you would have less carbonic acid, then you would have less hydrogen ions. So, I'm sorry. So, the equilibrium is gonna shift this way. So you be gonna become, your blood is gonna become slightly alkaline. So when you breathe in a, in a paper bag, during a panic attack, the CO2 that you expel, you expel way too much CO2, remains in the paper bag. And when you breathe in, you're going to take some of that CO2 back into your lungs. So I need you to remember one thing though, as many people have uh, probably seen all the arguments against masks. When we breathe in and out, we breathe in oxygen and CO2, and we breathe out oxygen and CO2. So when we breathe fast and shallow, we breathe out too much oxygen, and of course also some, sorry, too much CO2. And of course some oxygen. And then we breathe in, we breathe on oxygen and CO2. By breathing in from a paper bag, we're gonna get back some of that CO2 that we breathed out, we expelled, that we shouldn't have. In order to maintain the level of carbonic acid we need in our blood and to maintain homeostasis when it, as it relates to pH levels.